morning, I'm Chris McCarthy. Welcome to this news briefing from the 253rd National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society here in San Francisco. We're joined today by Ms. Simone Haslinger and Dr. Michael Hummel from Alto University. They will be talking to us about their work on upcycling fast fashion to reduce waste and pollution. Ms. Haslinger. Thanks a lot for the very kind introduction. Um, as it was already introduced, we try to develop a recycling process, especially for cotton polyester blended waste textiles. And the intention behind that was like to reduce the pile of textile wastes we have to face nowadays. And I mean, just consider yourself how, are you aware of what you are wearing at the moment? Do you know if the pair of jeans, for example, you are wearing is made of cotton only or whether it's polyester or elastane? And I guess this is a very important question we should ask ourselves. And especially when it comes to textile recycling, the bad news is that most of the stuff we buy nowadays is made of a lot of different materials. And this is what makes them really, really hard to recycle. So most of the stuff nowadays, just after being maybe be worn less than 10 times, it ends up in landfill directly. And as, we, as I said, we tried to find a solution for this problem at the moment to find something that is better than converting material to cleaning rags or to carpets, which will then be disposed later on. So what we tried to do was to separate cotton from, oh, <laughs> the next one, please, sorry. Cotton from polyester, because this is the most abundant blend on the market. The market share is about 15%. And on the slide, you can see, we started with pre-treated cotton polyester material, which was then dissolved in an ionic liquid and then could be then be separated because the polyester didn't dissolve and the solution we obtained of the cellulose was then subjected to dry jet wet spinning. And what we obtained was really nice fibers, pretty similar to lyocell or tensile fibers. In, in the case of this blend, it was a bit even thinner and like microfibers, which could be used in really nice applications such as women's wear and stuff like that. And later on, the fibers, we, we are now aiming perhaps to produce some demo product, such as the dress in this presentation, which was already produced by our research group a couple of years ago. And of course, in order to close the loop, we could then later think of if we don't like the dress anymore, just to recycle it again. And so, yeah, close the loop. And regarding textile recycling, our group has done a lot of different approaches as well. And the thing you can see here on the slide was done by a master student one year ago and what she was aiming for was to recycle the dyes of fabrics and she just went to second-hand stores and bought some old clothes no one would like to wear anymore and shredded them and tried to maintain the color and the, pic the fibers you can see below is what she obtained at the moment, they, are still, they can still not be used for textile applications because they are too thick, but we are aiming to elaborate what she has done and improve the properties. Maybe at this point, um, we should uh, take a little step backward and explain uh, the development um, of uh, this whole process, which is um, actually some sort of uh, collateral research evolving from fiber spinning uh, per se. What we started with was uh, cellulose isolated from wood, so-called dissolving pulp, and we tried to um, establish a new process to convert this type of cellulose into textile fibers for textile applications. And uh, in, in that sense, we have produced um, a couple of demo products um, which make us con quite confident about the development that Simone is now working on. 
And uh, here, here in, in is an example of this uh, where we spun different cellulosic materials. So those are not textile based, those are wood based, um, either from pure cellulose isolated from wood or from other components that are also within the wood, like lignin, as you can see on the picture or that uh, Simone is holding. And uh, with this technology, we were able to um, establish the spinning process and uh, produce some demo products um, that we have done together with um, renowned Finnish uh, design companies, for instance, Marimekko, where we have made this tablecloth or this bow tie that I'm wearing at the very moment. And then we, we realized that uh, this solvent that we are using for this particular process is also capable of dissolving cotton. And it wouldn't make sense to dissolve virgin cotton. Obviously, you are aiming then for cotton waste. And this is uh, what Simone's uh, topic was focusing on and what she was explaining, because soon it became apparent that there is only a very little fraction of pure cotton waste, and most of them are actually plants. So there's an imminent need of separating these um, uh, mixtures prior to processing of the single components, in this particular case, cotton and polyester. So, uh, next. Uh, next slide. <laughs> yeah, and this is our last example and our most recent team product. It was produced in Trash to Cash, uh, the pro main project I'm working in. And on this picture, you can see pure recycled cotton material. And unfortunately, we couldn't bring it here because at the moment it's in Stockholm at the Global Change Award ceremony. And yeah, we, this is our most recent product. Okay, um, are there any questions? So please wait for the uh, microphone and state your name and your affiliation uh, before asking your question. Hello, so it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about the new work um, with the polyester and cotton and take us through the steps of that process to actually recover um, the fibers there. And also, have you recovered, have you done any work with the polyester part as well? Have you been able to recover the, the sort of polyester fibers too? Yeah, actually, as I said, the polyester didn't dissolve in the ionic liquid. So after dissolving the cellulose, we could just filter the polyester off. And then we also tested the polyester for melt spinning in collaboration with a Swedish company. And what we got was, at the beginning it was kind of frustrating because the polyester was not really spinnable anymore. We just got brown droplets, which didn't look really nice. And then we tried to improve the process conditions and finally we were able at least to get some fibers. But the properties were still far away from what is, has to be used to produce new textiles. And what we suppose the reason of, for that could be that Already when virgin polyester is spun into fibers, it, it happens that the polyester degrades that much that later on it cannot be used again. So we have in general maybe not need to change our approach or add virgin material to the polyester in order to recycle it or upcycle it properly. Um, Bela Buslik with ACS. Um, how economical is the process for uh, the recovery of cellulose uh, or fi cellulose fibers and the polyester fibers? And the second question is, uh, in the in the past they used to make high quality paper from rags and uh, and and cotton fibers and so forth. Is this suitable for uh, for uh, paper production? I mean. It, it, it's still a, 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 quite a, a, an important part of, of the world in spite of all the computers. So first of all, about the sustainability of the process, the, the ionic liquid was tested and it is non-toxic 
And of course, we are also some other student in my group is working on recycling of the ionic liquid. And so far, we of course we would we are aiming for to recover everything, but at the moment we still have some problems regarding degradation once the water is evaporated. But maybe. Maybe I could add that in, indeed the separation of the um, cotton and polyester is energy intensive and yeah. obviously that adds to the cost. But what we think is an advantage of this process is that it is actually integrated in the spinning process. So if you would spin virgin cellulose like it's, it's already done on industrial scale, you also have to dissolve the cellulose. And we are doing this at the same time. So all we need is actually a more efficient filtration step to isolate the polyester. But, I mean, for the, for the real large-scale economics, we, we cannot make any, any real conclusions at this moment because we are working on a lab scale. And obviously, we would need to scale this up gradually to see um, how does this affect the cost efficiency. Okay, we have an online question. So, um, Carmen Drawl, from, who's freelance for Forbes.com, has two questions. Dr. Hummel, I miss what you said about your bow tie. Is your bow tie from Mary Mecco? And is it actually made of the wood cellulose? Um, the, the first one is, uh, no, it's not from Mary Mecco. So this was made actually by our design students. We, have, uh, we are a university that uh, combines both uh, 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 engineering and chemical side, um, but also uh, design and art. So we included our design students in this whole process. Um, but it is made of wood pulp, yes, so it was a demonstrator product from the initial development. Um, it is uh, made of a birch pulp uh, that is grown in Finland. Okay. And she has another question. Oh, she says, Carmen Drawls now says that she thinks that Simone already answered her second question. So. So it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. You talked a little bit about um, some of the problems with dyes. Can you tell us a little bit, can you expand a little bit more about, I mean, are there particular dyes in clothes that are a problem? Or um, what, uh, in the work that you've been doing, how does that affect this process of trying to recycle? So the work that I did was based on white cotton polyester blends. This means that we try to avoid that problem with the dyes, especially because it is very likely that, as I have shown that for cellulose, we could already retain some colors. So it was not that such a big problem, but for polyester where really virgin material is needed, one can suppose that it can happen that the polyester would not be spinnable anymore because the dye is an impurity. And also what is a problem is that the dyes are so different and we cannot really predict how the dyes would behave in our process because every garment is dyed with different dyes and this is something very challenging for us. Okay, we have another online question from Christine Sa from the American Chemical Society. She asks, Aside from the economics, I think the idea is to save energy and lower emissions of the fashion industry. Will your, will your process accomplish this? This is a tricky question. Of course, at the moment, as we said, that everything, we, we would be, need to be able to recover the ionic liquid, for example. And of course, compared to cotton industry, which is like really water consuming and cons not really sustainable for the environment, our process is aiming to reduce that. Do you want to answer? Yeah, it, it's a, a valid question indeed, because I mean, the whole the textile chain is, is very complex and there are many factors to take into account. And obviously we are working on the first link here, where we try to um, replace 
uh, the sourcing of new cotton, which is, as Simone said, uh, very, very thirsty, so it, it requires a lot of uh, water to cultivate it, and instead of that, use cotton that would otherwise end up on the landfill. And ending up on the landfill also means um, contributing to the um, carbon dioxide emissions, um, and quite a substantial amount. So we, we are working on this, and uh, the next step would then be the color preservation, because this is the next uh, very um, water-intensive and energy-intensive step. But uh, as Simone pointed out, it's a very complex topic at the moment because there are so many different dyes. And um, to so uh, one possibility to solve this problem would be to create textiles that are in made for recycling, where we label, for instance, the dyes so that uh, the people processing it afterwards know exactly what to do and can optimize their, their pretreatment processes accordingly. Thank you. Um, so the archived version of the session will be posted uh, online at bit.ly uh, slash ACSLive underscore San Francisco. And please join us for our next press conference today at 10 a.m. Pacific time on altering the immune system to reverse paralysis. Thank you. <laughs>